like all other architecture students, we spend a lot of time doing studies in architecture, like up to eight years. I think I spent eight years studying in architecture from degree up to master. And then I spent my master degree. Uh, I spent the time in Shanghai, in Tongqi University. And uh, most of the Malaysian don't know about Tongqi very much. But then uh, it's a very good architecture school, uh, well known in US, US, well known in Hong Kong, in Singapore, but not in Malaysia. So uh, I'm like, hey, hi. I'm like, uh, the degree master of Tongqi architecture is not really recognized in Malaysia. So, uh, but that, it doesn't stop me to like continue to practice as an architect in Penang because I love Penang more than other places. And so, um, to the art, okay, it's, um, it, the Chinese brush painting is always relates to, um, it's part of the elective course in Tongqi University during my master study. So, uh, when we study, well, we study uh, architecture in Tongqi University, there's an elective course for all the international students doing some other art-related uh, activities like Chinese art, painting, um, music instrument, and uh, some other art-related design or graphic elective courses like clay art as well. Then um, I picked clay art actually and then uh, also I went to the classes for Chinese uh, brush painting. But it's not uh, the, the, the type of art that you see today. It's more towards like meticulous um, painting of Chinese art that you need to spend months or years on just one single piece of painting. <laughs> yes. yes, because you need to, you know, uh, try to make all the strokes one by one to, to, you know, to get one bird or one flower out from uh, many layers of paper. So, uh, after that, I went to a Chinese art uh, class outside, out from the school, um, and I start to learn, you know, uh, like, once in a month. Uh, for this type of uh, Chinese art painting. Maybe because I, I very much like uh, Chinese culture, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do you know, to, to get to know Chinese culture. So, uh, of course, we ourselves, we are Chinese, and I, and I went to a Chinese school during my primary school, and as well as my secondary school. And then after that, I turned to University of Malaya to study architecture in English. So, uh, you know, we, we only start to learn English by university age. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> English speaking is not, is not that very good to me. So, after, uh, after degree, I decided to you know, try something relates back to Chinese culture. So, I picked school in Shanghai to continue my master. So uh, during the, the stay in Shanghai, I learned a lot like Qing Qi Su Hua. You know, in Chinese we call, <laughs> you know, the music instrument as well as the, the painting, you know, and then uh, what else? Qing Qi Su, Chinese calligraphy, uh, and then uh, the only thing that I am able to master and bring it back to Penang is Chinese art. Yeah, so the, the, the Chinese art painting, after that, I, after I came back to Penang, I still continue uh, my learning in one of the uh, uh, Buddhist school, uh, it's volunteer school, uh, to continue to learn Chinese art painting. So I uh, started to practice every day, almost every day, uh, until now it's about, I spent about four to five years of practice. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I think the intention, the main intention that the architecture school providing 
uh, elective cars, uh, uh, art-related elective cars to the international student is because they want to introduce their culture. Mm. You know, they, are, they, they want to introduce what sort of techniques and other practice, you know, that is their traditional culture that, uh, that they think that might inspire us, you know, to do better in architecture. So that's the, the very good thing that I appreciate that architecture school because uh, it relates very good in between architecture and art. So it's always art and architecture. It's not architecture alone. It's not engineering architecture. You know, it's very much to art and architecture. So after I came back, I, after I finished the master studies, I found that I, I got more uh, better hand to, you know, to create uh, artistic mm -hmm. architecture piece, you know, rather than very engineering architecture. Okay, uh, many people don't know uh, Luna Bar because it's quite hidden. And, uh, but we came to know about Luna Bar at the very beginning when they start this business because our, my, working <laughs> my working space is, is like very near to Luna Bar. So uh, we always have coffee here, you know, after a very dense meeting, a very long meeting. So uh, uh, then we, we get to know each other. Uh, Wemi, Jasmine, and all the stuff here. Uh, they they give me an, a different, totally different impression that what could really happen in Penang. It's not only a normal cafe, you know, just business relationship. It's it's more towards friends uh, relationship over here. So I felt quite very happy you know every time i visit this place and uh, it's very re relaxing space and uh women has always practiced uh to you know to gather all sort of form of business in one space and he's very good in utilizing one single space to do a lot of things so uh, i think this is part of uh women's practice on uh, showcase artworks of different artists uh, within the cafe space. So it's a very good thing that uh, uh, after this, through this uh, small exhibition of my arts, my friends get to know this place and uh, we means uh, the Luna Bar's regular customer will get to know about my art. So it's a two-way benefit. So um, I'm not confident at all if if my artworks is to go into a pretty serious uh, white box space and how much crowd I will I will grab I, I, I don't have confidence at all because we are not up to that uh, level yet we, we're still trying to improve ourselves so but this space I feel more uh, exciting because uh, I do not need to worry that uh, the exposure of my artworks is not enough because the customers here can always you know see my artworks when once they step in or the regular customer will know how to purchase or even you know make a discussion on the on the future collaboration so i have no worries about that part uh, and uh, at the same time, I also encourage my friend, you know, to, to get to know this space in uh, Penang. It's, it's quite a unique space to me. Mm. Uh, the process is quite simple. <laughs> it's very simple. It happens in a minute. So, uh, uh, women just ask, uh, if, what if we, we do, uh, we collaborate one time to do a small exhibition of my artworks. And of course, I say yes, and then uh, and then I just drop by, you know, after a long meeting, <laughs> just I just drop by for a coffee, and talk to women about uh, what sort of theme that we should do for this series of painting. Then uh, we start to talk about uh, uh, this this environment itself because we know that the artworks will be displayed in this 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 space. 
So um, women is is very much into uh, those Nordic and Scandinavian uh, decoration, and all those plants that you can see in this cafe is is a lot more. Uh, it's it's different from uh, what you always see in other places locally. It's not it's not really tropics Asian plants, right? It's it's, it's actually the plants are actually tropics just because you see it a lot in Nordic kind of interior design yeah. because it's exotic for them. But over here we kind of take for granted on what we have actually locally. So here's actually a mix of, of plants from the local jungle as well, from uh, from South America, Mexico yeah. etc. So we we mainly focus on plants with like various different shapes of leaves. So not so much flowers because a lot of people ask us like why don't we plant flowers to say because we are still very new. Flowers they need a lot more attention, a lot more care. So at the moment we are kind of happy with having everything green. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's one of the reasons why, why we have so much plants. Even my art teacher said uh, she never thought of like uh, trying to draw a cactus. You know, the first time, <laughs> the first time she saw uh, cactus on my paper, she was quite shocked. <laughs> and then um, because uh, my teachers has a lot of uh, quite many years uh, learning process with some other past, you know, some master of of Chinese art, and they never taught any cactus <laughs> you know it's because it's not a good thing so uh, um, but through this series of painting I master uh, different techniques from my teacher because uh, I start to be able to draw big leaves and to you know to translate the different form uh, rather than uh, bamboo rather than cherry blossom and I try to I try a lot of like small animals like uh, uh, squirrels frogs frogs also never happen <laughs> very very less uh, chance to see in Chinese art that they they are doing frogs so um, it's, it's very fun Huh. I, I gained a lot of fun during the process and uh, air plant as well air plant is also I think never exists in any any Chinese art it it's it all it only happened at you can see one air plants everywhere you know in this garden so try to capture the air plants together with the birds you know to to capture that moment so uh, it turns out quite well mm. Women gave a very good start for uh, to try to you know confirm the theme of of this series, and he also uh, uh, inspired me to really practice something different because women say no scenery. <laughs> we are san sui hua. <laughs> so, so um, I try out something uh, more towards hua niao hua, more towards flower and and birds. Uh, but there's no flower here, so cancel another uh, flower. Then I left only birds. So <laughs> there's a lot of birds uh, in the small uh, small round shape uh, painting. It's all uh, demonstrating all the birds. And then uh, the other bigger size will be all the animals. So uh, I think I, I need to thank to uh, Wei Ming for giving me a very good start. Then I can deliver the whole series um, in a very well formed.